grow so tall I want to tangle up my twisted limbs with yours I want to lose track of the time I spent without you It's time to make you lose I don't want to lose your everyone, it's Christina from American Red Flower Farm. So right now I'm in my backyard and I think that we are just going to take a look around. Uh, it's been a while since I took you guys on a backyard garden tour and um, this isn't going to be a full backyard garden tour. There's just a couple things that I wanted to show you guys. If you are new to my channel, I am in zone 9B. I am in Oakdale, California and in the Central Valley of California and specifically in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, I grow cut flowers. I've been growing cut flowers for the last three years and I've been selling for the last two years. Uh, we just expanded and at least 2.5 acres, um, about 10 minutes from our house. And we use that to plant only flowers uh, to sell wholesale, retail, uh, market bouquets, which I do a market on Sundays. And then I also sell in front of my house. I do custom orders and I do some design work or events. I also sell by the bucket. Uh, I mainly use my backyard, my flower business. Uh, up until this spring, I stopped planting flowers out here, started planting more um, vegetables and edibles and things that we could eat and such. I did plant last fall back here. And so uh, I still have a bunch of that. And I do, I did also plant some um, early summer starts out here. So, yeah. so let's look around and I will show you a few things that I have noticed lately that I thought that maybe you guys would be interested in seeing. Around me is uh, this fancy grass. I think it's like a pumice grass or some sort of uh, pumice-like grass. Uh, I have the corn. This is the trial corn that I started. And let's see what else can you see. You got some Dusty Miller down here. So I planted uh, the butterfly PT, which is a purple flower uh, that is used for tea in, in Asia. And it's got some health benefits. I don't remember what they are. And so if you add like lemon juice to it or honey, it'll turn purple. And so it's really neat uh, to play with and it's like a science experiment. And it also tastes pretty delicious. So um, I found them on Baker's Creek. I found the seeds on Baker's Creek uh, back in the spring. And so I'd bought them and I planted them a few different times. And this was the last ones that I planted and I started them in soil blocks, uh, which I made a video of uh, back a few months ago. And they are a vine. And so I put them right here and I also put them back here, um, right in this area right here. So they have some aphids on them. I believe they're aphids and they are yellow or goldish, goldish, yellow, orangish colored. Um, I've never seen them before. And I thought it was really neat that they are only on these plants. And so it is basically like a housing unit. And I know that I can use this for uh, companion planting. And I'll give you guys a close up of So if you guys know what type of aphid those are, uh, let me know in the comments. It would be uh, interesting to find out. I usually use a app. Uh, it's like a bug identifier app and you just take a picture of it. So the first time I see a bug, but if I've never seen it before, then I get the app out and I will, um, I'll use the app to find out what it is and to find out if it's a good bug or a bad bug. Um, but I already know that aphids are a bad bug. So I'll let you guys tell me uh, in the comments below uh, what kind of aphid that is and if you've ever experienced these aphids in your garden. Yeah, so if you have any info on them, then let me know down below. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so here's the next thing. Uh, this is the back side of the hoop house. We have the sides up because it does get so hot. So in a few of my first videos, I planted out Lysianthus plugs. 
and these are them. They are blooming. Um, only a few of them survived or how many, I don't remember how many I had. Maybe I had like 40 or somewhere around there. And uh, I planted them out in this area here. They were all right here. And Lysianthus are very small, are slow growers and are very finicky. And I planted these out later. And I wanna say maybe it was like even February. Uh, so my problem was, I think that I overcrowded them. What happened was I ended up, I direct sown some seeds, which were the larkspur and the corn cockle. Yeah, so I direct sown larkspur and corn cockle, and then I planted in the lysianthus plugs, and I didn't realize that, holy shit. I see the gigantic, the most biggest spider I've ever seen in my, maybe my whole life. Oh my God. It actually might be a big black bumblebee, like one of the big black bees. I think I see wings on it. Yeah, it's definitely a big black bee. Yeah, it's just like holding onto that leaf. Okay, so what I was saying was that uh, I direct sown the larkspur and the corn cockle and then put in the plugs and they overcrowded the lysianthus because they're so finicky. Um, I think that it overcrowded them and it caused them not to grow. But <laughs> I wanna show you guys the, the celosia. Uh, this has, I haven't really cut this. I think Ona came out, I think Ona came out and uh, cut it maybe once or twice for me. Um, I don't really come in here because of uh, because of spiders, <laughs> because it is so overgrown right now. Um, I will be cleaning, clearing this out. I will be clearing this out uh, here in the next month, so that I can get started on my fall planting that I'll be doing in here. But anyway, so I I planted this with you guys. This I started from seeds, and I did make a video on that way back in I don't know April or something. I want to say. Um, so I'm probably not going to cut this. I'm going to seed and I'll use the seed for next year because Celosia seeds are um, on the more expensive side of the seeds that I buy. Uh, they are one of the most expensive seeds that I buy and I think that they can go up to like 14 or $24 for just a hundred of them depending on the variety. But this one right here is huge. It's like as big as my hand and it's super, it's super neat. Uh, this was my first year growing the brain variety of the Celosia. This was another one that I got from Baker's Creek and it is a variegated, it is so a variegated the variety. Beds, my summer beds. Uh, this is what I used as my summer beds last year. And I also done it this year. I had my ranunculus back there and I also have the potatoes that I planted back there and we may or may not go look at those, but I wanted to show you the mahogany splendor hibiscus. It's so tall. It's taller than I am. Uh, I am pretty tall. I'm five foot four. And this was my first year growing, but this is what the leaves look like on it. Uh, I grow it uh, because they are so pretty and they are great for the fall because they are fall colors. And uh, it is a uh, hibiscus. And it's a perennial in this area in zone 9B. I have to wait till the stems get woody so that it doesn't get uh, soft on me and and uh, get limp in my arrangements. Right here next to my face, we have some powdery mildew. Ona likes to call it PM for short. I just call it powdery mildew. And half the time he says PM, I'm like, what are you saying right now? But anyways, this is the lilac variety of the Benarius Giant. And it does have powdery mildew because they're getting old and they probably don't get very much sun over here, the humidity. And uh, when plants get older, they start to, um, just like people, they start getting diseases and sicknesses. And so powdery mildew is something that we are very familiar with in Okay, so, our backyard. so I'm back here on the side of the hoop house uh, between the chicken run 
and the hoop house and down right here are the vines that I planted. And so we stopped here right now so I can show you this beautiful delphinium. Look at the color of this thing, it's so pretty. Um, it's going to seed down here on the bottom. And so, and it only has a few blooms left on the top, so it's not uh, an ideal cut anymore. It is past its vase lifetime to be cut. So uh, this will just go to seed and I will harvest the seeds because my gosh, this thing is gorgeous. It's just so pretty blue. It's just the prettiest blue. Okay, so if you guys recall, uh, this behind me is the chicken run area and my brown eyed Susans, my seed tray or my seed rack. This is where I planted melons as well. These were the last melons that I planted. Uh, when I let the chickens out last week, they destroyed this area, they scratched it all up, and uh, they pulled out one of my melons. I'll add a picture right here of what that melon looked like uh, when I found it, and I did try it, and it was bittersweet. Literally, it tasted bittersweet, and it was bittersweet because it was so small, and it didn't grow to its full potential. So, uh, but I do have a little watermelon growing behind me, so this is the cute little melon, the one melon that I have still. Okay. And uh, it's still flowering. This plant is still flowering and it's still growing. So maybe I will get some more. Um, I think that this is the lone survivor of the vines that I planted in here. And since I'm down here, I will show you these guys. So I bought these, I think at like Home Depot or something. Just they're fiddle farting and uh, I <laughs> have to leave there with some sort of plant. And so these are the ones that I got. I got, it's a tomato. It's a giant, like it's like a gallon container, a half gallon container tomato. I don't remember the variety. And then there's also a lavender down here. And uh, I just never planted them out. The lavender has not rooted out yet. However, the tomato has. I went to go plant the tomato and it was rooted into the ground. And so it's been there since, and I just water it. Uh, it's got a couple tomatoes on it and I'll pull those off. Use those to make a sauce. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my small garden tour and the little surprises that I had for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching and remember, keep your hands dirty.